When I was like 12 years old, I discovered that wine was made with fermented grape juice. So I snuck into the kitchen and got a bottle of Welch's grape juice and thought, wouldn't it be so adult if I had a bottle of wine in my closet? And I checked on it every day to see if it had turned into wine yet, and then eventually just forgot about it. And then like a year later, I rediscovered it and thought, oh my god, there's a bottle of wine in my closet. (laughs) And I thought, now is the moment. So I opened it up and it smelled disgusting. And I was like, are you ready to be an adult or not? So I put the bottle to my lips and this like disc of mold slid into my mouth. (laughs) And I thought, I guess I'm not ready to be an adult. When I was like eight or nine years old, my grandpa took me to a store and behind the counter there was a display of toys. And my grandpa said, pick out one of those toys. And I said, I'll have that Wonder Woman doll. And the woman behind the counter looked at me and said, that toy is for little girls. And my grandpa looked at me and said, is that the toy you want? And I said, yes, grandpa, give me that Wonder Woman doll. (laughs) And he bought the doll for me and the woman shot me a dirty look. And the moral of the story, I think we can all agree, is that grandpa made me gay. At the seventh grade dance, I remember there was this girl named Tara, and Tara had really developed like way earlier than the other girls. And at the dance, they played that Bon Jovi song, Living on a Prayer, and Tara started dancing around, and she was like, I love this song. And uh, she was really bouncing around, and all of the boys at the dance were like, Wow, and so was I, but from my perspective, it was because like her hair looked really amazing and her dance moves were almost like she had choreographed to the Bon Jovi song. And I went right up to Tara and I said, Tara, you look amazing. And all the guys were like, wow, Kevin is really bold. And Tara was like, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> So right after college, I realized I needed to go to another school to learn how to actually make money. And everyone was like, you'd make so much money doing hair. And I thought, oh my God, I'd make so much money doing hair. So I went to beauty school. But two weeks in, I totally regretted it. I hated it so much. We just kept looking at pictures of nail fungus and lice. And I remembered humans are disgusting. So I went to the office and said, could I please withdraw and get a refund? And she said, that's against policy. Do you have a valid reason? And I knew I was going to have to go big or she wasn't going to let me out of it. So I said, I just got a record deal. And what I wasn't expecting is she screamed at the top of her lungs, then burst out of the office and announced it to the whole school. And now I'm signing autographs. (laughs) But I didn't care because I got my money back. When I was like 10 years old, there was a box of maxi pads in the bathroom. And I said, Mom, what are these? And she said, you put them in your underwear. So the next morning before school, I put one in my underwear, adhesive side up, and went to school. And it was really uncomfortable. And then I went to the bathroom to try to peel it off. And that adhesive is really strong. And I was in there a long time. And then the teacher came in and said, Kevin, are you okay? And I said, yes. And then I thought maybe if I get it wet, it'll peel off easier. So I went over to the sink and then the teacher came back in and she just froze. I could tell she couldn't quite comprehend what she was looking at. And she just turned around and laughed. When I was like 14 years old, I was watching a movie with my mom and dad in the living room, and that terrible moment happened that we've all experienced where you're suddenly watching a love scene with your mom and dad. (laughs) And the air sucked out of the room, and we're all super awkward. But then I thought, wait, I don't want my parents to think I'm gay. So I tried to say, she's pretty, but my voice didn't work. And so I just sort of like, in a creepy whisper, was like, she's pretty. (laughs) 
I worked at Olive Garden all through college. And when I graduated, I was like, I'm going to move up in the world. And I applied to work at a fancier Italian chain restaurant. And I got dressed up and got my resume and went in there. And the manager made me sit down and take this very long personality test. It was all questions like, sometimes people are dishonest, agree or disagree. And it took like 45 minutes. It was crazy long. And then the manager disappeared into his office and reemerged a few minutes later with this very serious look on his face. And he was like, I'm sorry, we can't interview you. <laughs> And I was like, what? And he was like, you failed the personality test. <laughs> and I was so shocked. All I could think of to say was, I'm educated. And then he just looked at me and sort of shrugged. <laughs> When I was a kid, I wanted Dungeons and Dragons so badly, but I wasn't allowed to have it because obviously I'd get possessed because it was the 80s. But finally, I had enough of my own money to buy it myself. So I went to the toy store and then brought it home, and I was so excited to open the box and play with the dragons. But imagine my surprise when it was just a couple of pads of paper and some dice, and I was like, what is this? And realized I made the biggest mistake of my entire life. And I went back to the toy store to return it. And they were like, why? And I was like, I think it's broken. <laughs> and they're like, what? And I would double down, even though it didn't make sense. I was like, I think it's broken. I tried to play it and it didn't work. <laughs> and they gave me my money back. The answer is no. <laughs> In my super fundamentalist Christian youth group, we were doing a Thanksgiving dinner for the homeless, and there was this guy who was sometimes weirdly flirty, and he was chopping up these sausages, and then he licked his finger and said, these sausages are delicious, and then I said, are they? And then for some reason, he immediately stuck his finger in my mouth, and I sucked the sausage juice off his finger, and then in horror realized the pastor was standing right there and saw the whole thing and the look on his face was something I've never quite seen before it was like confusion and a loss of innocence and then he weirdly smiled and said you guys have a special friendship and then a little bit later I saw the pastor throw that tray of sausages away if you wanted to be healthy when it was the 90s, you were supposed to eat at Subway as much as possible. <laughs> and I was at Subway, and the girl behind the counter was clearly having a bad day, and I asked her to put black olives on my sandwich, and she immediately got irritated, and she was like, are you trying to make this a healthy sandwich? And I said, yes. And with anger in her voice, she was like, well, you messed up with the olives. <laughs> And it caught me off guard, and I just sincerely said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I used to live in this really terrible apartment building, and on my floor there were these two guys who had those samurai swords that you might hang on the wall if you're into that. And one day they got into a pretend samurai sword fight in the hallway. But then the samurai sword fight turned real, and one guy got stabbed and had to go to the hospital, and he ended up being fine, but his blood was all over the hallway, and the landlord didn't clean it up, and I thought, isn't this really unsanitary? And it was really hot that summer, and the hallway started to smell like that guy's decaying body, and one time I saw him, and I said, this is what you're going to smell like when you die. <laughs> And he didn't think it was funny, and I was like, whatever, dude, you lost a fake samurai sword fight. When I was like 10 years old, I went shopping with my mom, and I found a crop top shirt that said muscles on it. And I said, mom, can I have that muscles shirt? And she said, no. And I said, why? And she said, because the first time someone says, where's your muscles, you'll never wear it again. And I remember I had to really contemplate what she meant because it didn't occur to me that the shirt insinuated that I had muscles. I wanted the shirt because I was just generally a fan of muscles. <laughs> 
When I was in high school, I had a friend with really long hair, and he wanted to turn it into a mohawk, so he shaved the sides of his head, and then put a ton of Aussie sprunch spray in the top part, but it wouldn't stand up, and it was th this gross flap of hair just hanging on the top of his head, and he started to get upset, and then I said, I've heard you can put an egg in it to make it stand up. So he scrambled an egg and put it in his hair, and now it's even more disgusting. But then I thought, maybe we should iron it. So he laid his head, like, on my mom's ironing board, and we ironed his hair, and the egg immediately fried, and the whole house smelled like burned egg, and he had an omelet moha. <laughs> When I was a kid, I was obsessed with TV dinners. Every time we were at the store, I'd ask my mom to buy TV dinners, and she would never buy them. And then around that time, I decided that I really wanted a lizard, and my parents strangely bought the lizard with very little resistance. Then we had to go out of town for a couple days, and when we got back home, the lizard was gone, and we couldn't figure out what happened to my lizard. And then we found the lizard's tail in the cat's water bowl. And then uh, that night, my mom bought TV dinners. When I was in seventh grade, I somehow convinced my parents to buy me parachute pants. And that Friday night, we were going roller skating at United Skates of America. And before we left, I put some sun in in my hair. And it turned my hair like the color of a tiger. Um, but I felt like I looked really cool because I had some sun in and some parachute pants. Sun in and some parachute pants. And uh, we met at the mall, and now I'm a monster, so I got my ear pierced at Claire's. And then we got to the rink, and they did the all-guy skate. And they played a white snake song, and I skated really fast. And I felt like I looked really cool with my sun in and some parachute pants. Sun in and some parachute pants. <laughs> and my ear was thrown from the piercing and I knew I was gonna get in trouble later but I didn't care because I felt alive do you remember that period of time where every single person in the world had an acoustic guitar when it was the 90s? And there'd always be one person who would find the guitar at a party, and they'd just pick it up and fully start playing a song like, I don't want the world to see me. <laughs> and you were at a party where maybe you'd make out with someone, but now you're at an intimate living room evening with the acoustic stylings of Natalie. <laughs> When I was in college in the 90s, everything was so dramatic. Like you'd call your friend at 2 in the morning and say, I think I'm going to change my major. And your friend would be like, oh my god, we have to meet and talk about it right now. And then we'd go to this place called the Family Kitchen and drink coffee and smoke cigarettes all night. And I know that's disgusting, but you have to remember it was the 90s. And then you'd be like, I don't think a musical theater major is very practical, and my real passion is pottery. And your friend would be like, well, you have to follow your passions. Then we'd order a basket of seasoned fries and pay for it with our financial aid. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I'd be paying for those seasoned fries for the rest of my life. And the moral of the story, kids, is don't go to college. For me, gym class was torture, and why do we teach kids at that age that nothing matters more than sports? And on this particular day, we were going to play basketball, and they just assumed that everyone knew the rules to basketball, but I did not, and I still don't today, and I don't fucking care, but I cared a lot back then, and to make it even more vulnerable, my team had to take off our shirts, and I was in a total panic, so I thought, my best strategy is just to lay low until someone threw me the ball, and I thought, okay, it's now or never. So I threw the ball, and it went perfectly into the basket, even made that swoosh sound and everything. And I thought, finally, I've arrived, until everyone started laughing. And apparently, I threw the ball into the incorrect basket. And I remember watching everyone laughing, and it was like this mind-expanding moment, because I was like, this doesn't matter. 
when I was like 16 years old. I got a job washing dishes at a crappy diner. And there was a manager named Pam and she was terrible. And no one could last longer than a couple of weeks. And one time it was really busy and the cook just walked out. And everyone started freaking out. But I just walked up to the grill and started cooking. And it was like a scene in a movie, like the lowly peasant dishwasher <laughs> saves the day and Pam started putting me on the schedule as a cook and after a couple of months this is totally true I was like the main cook at the crappy diner because everyone had just quit but Pam eventually became a monster again and I'd had enough and I was about to walk out and Pam was like Kevin where are you going and I turned around and I was like Pam I'm only 16 years old <laughs> I was like 10 years old, we were watching TV, and they had on male strippers, and they started dancing around, and I got really excited, and I said, Mom, are they about to take off their pants? And they looked a little concerned, and then the next morning, I recounted the entire thing in great detail to my grandma, and she said, well, I don't like that sort of thing, and I said, I do, I love it, Grandma. When I was like nine years old, for a very brief moment, I thought the word tatas meant toes. And so I asked my grandmother, Grandma, do you ever paint your tatas? And she was like, what? And I was like, do you ever paint your tatas? And she was like, people don't do that. And I'm like, yes, they do. Mom does it all the time. <laughs> And I was like, anyway, if you ever decide to paint your tatas, I think you should paint them green. A long time ago, I went on a date with this guy, and I'm very prone to social anxiety, but on a first date, I'll just be fully awkward. Like, why am I talking weird and I don't know how to move my arms? <laughs> and uh, we met at this place, and we were waiting for our table, and right then a roach ran across the floor. And I don't know why I did this. I swear this is not something I would normally do. But I knelt down and gently picked up the roach and opened the door and set it free into the wild. And for a brief moment, I thought, he's going to think I'm like a cool nature guy. And then I turn around and I see his face and he's sort of pale and horrified. And so I just freeze. And then he's like, do you need to go wash your hands? And now I'm like, great, he thinks I'm not gonna wash my hands, and I don't know, maybe I wasn't. The whole thing was a blur. In college, I was in a relationship with this guy named Adam, and one day where I was working, his ex-boyfriend walked in and said, you can have Adam, and I was like, what? You guys broke up like two years ago. And he said, no, we didn't. And then we put our stories together in this web of deception unfolded. He was in a relationship with both of us for like two years, and neither one of us knew. So we sent Adam's pager a message because it was the 90s. And we went to his house to confront him. And when we got there, he was really drunk. And he started crying and he ran out the front door. So both of us ran after him. And now we're all three running down the sidewalk, crying, screaming Adam's name. And at the time, that was really traumatic. But looking back, that story is really stupid.